Hello, my name is Lewis Laval and this is Orphic. As well as becoming your new everyday wallet, Orphic has three powerful functions for the mentalist and the magician. One, it has one of the most psychologically deceptive peaks I have ever seen in a wallet. Even when I gave my original designs to the wallet makers, they initially said it couldn't be done. Two, a bold yet stunningly simple switch that will allow you to switch business cards, playing cards, anything you need. If you can fit it inside the wallet, you can switch it. And three, the secret load. Whether you want to load predictions, reveals, or even sign playing cards, Orphix got you covered. As well as the Orphic wallet, I have also created Orphic Plus. Both wallets are just as powerful as each other. They have the exact same functions, features, and amount of pockets. The only difference between the two is that Orphic Plus is just one centimeter wider. Now, a handful of my mentalist friends that I've spoken to prefer Orphic because they work with business cards, billets, and only a small amount of playing cards, so the Orphic wallet is perfect for them. But a handful of my magician friends who are serious card workers prefer Orphic Plus because that one centimeter extra width makes that signed card to wallet just that little bit easier. But everything we teach you in the instructional video can be performed with both. So the choice is yours. In the instructional video, I'm going to teach you not one, but five different ways of getting your peak. So no matter what kind of situation you find yourself performing in, you'll be covered. I'm going to teach you two of my favorite drawing duplications that you can perform with the Orphic wallet. You'll learn a handful of switching methods, and I'm also going to give you plenty of subtleties, presentational points, and extra mentalism ideas. And if that wasn't enough, my good friend Craig Petty is going to teach you some incredible magic routines that you cannot perform with any other wallet. My name is Louis Laval and this is Orphan. So Cameron, yes. I need you to help me, okay? You're gonna see an awesome trick. Okay. I'm gonna show you the difference between a mind reader and a magician. Okay. Because I'm not a mind reader, I'm a magician, but I do know, I have got friends that are mind readers, and I kind of, I dabble a little bit. And, and a lot of people turn around to me and they say, Craig, because that's my name, Craig, they say, Craig, would you like to know the, you know, I want to know the difference between the two. So I'm going to try and show you that. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. And we're going to use a deck of cards. The wallet is going to become important a little bit later on, and you'll see why. I will tell you, there's something inside the wallet that's kind of interesting. Okay. We'll get back to that in a bit, all right? So. Uh, pack of 52 cards. Do you want to shuffle them or do you trust me? No, it's fine, yeah. You're happy? Yeah. Brilliant yeah. stuff. You're happy, I'm happy. So step number one, a magician would have a card picked and signed. Magicians are all about signing cards. So first thing I want you to do is grab a card for me, any card that you want to, and have a look at it, remember it, and don't forget it. Are you happy with that card? Yeah. Good stuff. So I'm going to give you a pen. What I want you to do is take this pen and you're going to write your name in big letters on the face of the card. Okay. Not on the back, on the face. Okay. Not on your face, on the face of the card. Very important. <laughs> yes. All right, write your name on there. Cool. And Cameron, underneath, if you could put your bank account number and sort code, that would be amazing. That would be <laughs> pin number, all that stunned stuff. And I see the writing's a little bit low. So put a big smiley face as well on there, so that would be amazing. And I'll take the pen back. Excellent stuff. And unless you have a habit of signing playing cards, that kind of makes that card unique. Would you agree? Yeah. Good. Then what a magician would do is have the card put back in the deck, and then the magician would try and lose the card in the pack, and they'll probably do a few fancy cuts and a few fancy shuffles. If you've ever seen a magician on TV before, then you'll recognize what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And then the magician would try and find your card. But a, um, a, uh, a, me a mentalist or a mind reader, they don't do that. They're all about delving deep into your soul and trying to extract information. So let me show you what a mind reader would do. They wouldn't have you pick a card and sign it, they'd have you just look at a card. So do me a favor, just say stop. Stop. Are you, are you happy there, yeah? Yeah. I'm just gonna give you a quick peek at this card. Can you have a look at it for me? Mm-hmm. Very important you remember it, okay? Because later on, when I dramatically say, this is your card, if you got, I don't know, lose its impact slightly, <laughs> so try remember it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop your card right there in the wallet, okay? Can you hold your hand out for me? That would be good. I'm gonna put that right there and put your other hand on top. Okay. There's no way I could know what that card is. You just looked at it and we isolated it right there in the wallet. So look at me, concentrate. Mm -hmm. Think of the color of the card. Mm -hmm. 
course, it's, it's got to be either red or black. Yeah. It's a black card. It is, yeah. See, mind reading one. I'm channeling my <laughs> inner Darren Brown here. Concentrate on the, uh, there's 26 black cards. Concentrate on the suit. Mm -hmm. It's either a club or a spade. Mm -hmm. It's a club, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's what I thought, it's a club, yeah. Um, so we've eliminated, so there's 13 cards left. Uh, picture or number, concentrate on whether it's a picture card, like a Jack Queen or a King, or a number card. Okay. It looks slightly to the left, that tells me it's a number card, is that right? <laughs> yeah. So now I've got 10 cards left to go. What I want you to do is mentally in your head, count through the cards, in your head, silently, not out loud, and stop when you get to yours. Right, okay, you stopped. I think I've got it. Was your card the Four of Clubs? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, right? <laughs> Let's just check. Now that's not bad, right? But like I said, I am not a mind reader. I'm a magician. Hold your hand out again for me. Put your other hand on top. This is how a magician would find a card. Because you signed a card, didn't you? Mm -hmm. A magician would go fancy. See, what a magician would do is take the deck with one hand, cut the deck with one hand, shuffle the deck with one hand. That's called a lonely guy with way too much time on his hands. <laughs> and then when they've done that, they would get to your card. And I think that's your signed card, but I'm going to go one step further. If I put it under my hand and do this, it vanishes. And when I say it's gone, I mean it's gone. And do you remember at the very beginning of this, I said I had something inside that wallet? Yeah. You're not going to believe this. Because if you just open up that wallet yourself now and have a look inside, staring you in the <laughs> face, inside the wallet, there is one card, the Queen of Spades. Was that your card? That's crazy. Yeah, that was my card, yeah. So, that is, right. so now you know the difference between a magician and a mind reader. No. <laughs>